Hey guys, today's video is going to be a fun one. I'm going to be making a whole Popeyes inspired meal. So I have been wanting to film this video for at least a month and a half now, even before this whole chicken sandwich craze started. Recently on our way home from Kings Island, we stopped at a Popeyes restaurant and it was just so, so good. I knew right away that I wanted to try and recreate it from home. We don't live too close to one, so we rarely get to have it. And I figured this will be perfect. So I'm not going to title this video like copycat recipes because I don't want to set y'all's expectations too high. No matter what I do, it's not going to taste just like theirs not to mention there are very few recipes online to even look at on a couple of things I just winged it and hope for the best so this is the day after I made the meal I made it yesterday and y'all it was so amazing I'm so excited to share this with you guys so I guess I'll start by telling you what was on the menu so I made the chicken tenders their blackened ranch, some red beans and rice, Cajun fries, and some biscuits. Everything was great, but the fried chicken and the ranch was exceptional. I still can't get over it. Um, it was literally the best that I have ever made. So, like I said, I cannot wait to share this with you all. And if you are interested in knowing how I did it, keep on watching. So, I hope that this video isn't going to be too all over the place. I'm just going to show it to you guys in the order that i done it. So, the very first thing I did as soon as I woke up this morning, I started to marinate my chicken tenderloin. So, to this dish, I'm adding in about two and a half pounds. I know that it would have been cheaper to buy like a family pack, but my Walmart was sold out of them. And I'm just too shy to go and ask the butcher to make me one. So, this is just what I did. And then I'm going to cover this in some buttermilk. So, buttermilk is an awesome tenderizer for chicken and it adds some flavor as well. I didn't measure it. I just did it until the chicken was covered. And then I'm going to get in there with my hands and just massage it in really well to make sure that every piece is coated. You can even do this the night before if you have your life together. Um, so now I'm just going to take some cling wrap and I'm going to cover my dish tightly and pop that in the fridge for several hours. Up next, I got started on the blackened ranch. So this is one of those things that I couldn't really find a recipe for. I did find like one, but it just didn't sound that good. So what I did is I measured out one cup of mayonnaise and I added that to my mixing bowl. I'm also going to be measuring out one cup of buttermilk just in that same measuring cup. No need to dirty up another one. And then you're going to need one ounce of ranch seasoning mix. If you have a large container like I do, you are going to need three tablespoons to equal the one ounce. And then for the secret ingredient, this is what's going to take your ranch to a whole nother level. It is this Satarans Blackened Seasoning. I found it at Walmart, but I'm sure they sell it at most stores. I wouldn't have even known this existed, but I've seen a few YouTubers talk about it, so I figured it would be perfect. I didn't measure it out. I probably should have, but if I had a guess, I probably used about two teaspoons. Honestly, just added it in there until the color looked right. And then I'm going to pour it into this little dressing container. I talk about this all the time. I found it at Walmart for less than two bucks and I love it. Um, normally I don't even worry about dirtying up a mixing bowl. I just shake all the ingredients in here and it's good to go. But normally I also usually cut my ranch recipes in half. And since I made the full one, I just use the mixing bowl. But anyways, I'm just going to screw on my lid and I'm going to pop that in the fridge for a few hours to chill. Now I'm going to get started on the biscuit. So to my food processor, I'm going to be adding in two cups of flour. You're supposed to use all purpose, but I only had one and a half cups and then I ran out. Leave it to me, plan out a whole video and don't even make sure I have all the ingredients. But luckily I had some whole wheat flour. So I just made up for it by adding in a half a cup of that and watch me make a mess. I swear anytime I use flour, I have it all over my kitchen. I'm like a child. But now I'm going to be adding in some baking soda, baking powder, some salt, and some sugar. Then I'm going to pop my top on and I'm just going to pulse that around for a few seconds to get that incorporated. Next, I'm just going to take a whole stick of cold butter and cut it into little pieces and place it on top of my flour. It is key to always use really cold butter when making biscuits and you are going to want to cut that into your flour. This is the whole reason that I use a food processor because I don't have one of those pastry cutters or blenders, whatever they're called, to do it with. So this works perfect for me. Just a little hack and as you can see, it's nice and crumbly. The butter's cut into fine little pieces and then I'm just going to dump that into a large mixing bowl and then I'm going to add in about three-fourths of a cup of buttermilk and I'm just going to take my wooden spoon and stir that until a dough forms. Here I am just dusting my work surface with some extra flour and I'm going to dump out my dough and I'm just going to work with this until it is workable and not sticky anymore. You definitely don't want to overwork it because you don't want to melt that butter and you don't want them to turn out tough. So I'm just going to knead this until it comes together. Thank you. 
Now I'm just going to whip out my rolling pin and I'm going to flatten this so that I can start cutting the biscuits. You definitely don't wanna roll it too thin or you'll just have some flat and sad biscuits. So I don't really know how thick to tell y'all, but you know, just kinda use your best judgment, I guess. And I also don't have one of those biscuit cutters. I cannot find one. I need to look on Amazon, but I'm just using a glass. It works just as good. And I'm just going to place those on a greased cookie sheet. This recipe made six biscuits. You could probably at least definitely get seven. As you can see, I made that first one pretty big, but I'm just gonna pop this into my preheated oven of 400 degrees, and I'm going to set my time for 22 minutes. So here they are straight out of the oven. I'm just going to brush the tops with some melted butter. As you can see, these are a little bit discolored. That's just because of that whole wheat flour that I had to use. This was a really great biscuit recipe though. We fully enjoyed it, but I have to say the biscuits that I normally make are slightly better. So I will have both recipes linked down below in my description box. Up next, I got started on the red beans and rice. So to one saucepan, I'm adding in one cup of long grain to two cups of liquid. I use a combination of chicken broth and water. I'm gonna let that come up to a boil and then I wanna turn it down, cover it and let it simmer until it's done. And then in another little saucepan, I'm gonna add in one can of light red kidney beans that I have drained and rinsed. And then I'm going to season that up with some butter, some liquid smoke. Once again, I didn't measure anything, but I did find a recipe for this that I will have linked if you want the exact measurements. I'm also going to be using some onion powder, garlic salt, black pepper, and some regular salt, and then I'm going to cover it with some water. So I know that I'm going to get a few comments about how I probably should have used dry beans over the canned beans, but this meal was time consuming enough, so I am thankful for the canned stuff, but you do you. Oh yeah, and also I added in some hot sauce. So I'm just gonna let this come up to a boil and I'm going to take my spoon and just kinda mash the beans down, not all of them, but just a good amount of them. That is what's going to help thicken up your broth. As you can see, this thickened up really nicely. When it starts pulling away from the sides like that, you know it's done. So that just got poured over top of this rice and it really did taste similar to theirs. So flavorful, I was impressed. Next, I got started on the Cajun fries. So I'm going to be using three russet potatoes and I'm just going to peel and wash those and then I'm just going to slice those into the shape of fries. After I got all of those sliced up, I just covered them in some water and I'm gonna let those soak for 30 minutes. This is going to remove all the excess starch and it's supposed to help crisp them up. So then I drained off the water and placed them on some paper towels and I just dried them off really well. You definitely don't want to have wet fries. And then I dried out my bowl and then just added them all in there. Now I'm just gonna be taking a good amount of olive oil and drizzling that all over the top. And then I'm going to be seasoning it with a good amount of this Cajun seasoning. And then I'm just gonna take my hands and just rub it down really good and make sure that every piece is coated. So obviously if you really wanted that fast food, a Popeye's taste, you'd want to deep fry these. But since I was already deep frying the chicken and having a heavy calorie meal, I didn't want to deep fry these too. So I used my air fryer. I just preheated my basket for five minutes at 350 and I set my timer for 20, but I ended up letting them go for 30 and I did shake my basket a few times to make sure that they all got evenly crispy. So I actually prepped this flour and egg mixture for the fried chicken while my potatoes were soaking for those 30 minutes, as you can see in the background. I just did this so I wouldn't get too overwhelmed later, but luckily I found some self-rising flour in my pantry. I wouldn't have been too happy if I had to use whole wheat for my fried chicken, but the recipe said to use four cups, but I only ended up using three and it worked out just fine. So next I'm going to start seasoning this flour up. So I'm gonna be adding in plenty of black pepper as well as a good amount of paprika. And then I'm just gonna add a small amount of cayenne pepper. I definitely didn't wanna to add too much because I didn't want it to be too spicy for my kids, obviously. I was going to close up this bag, give it a good shake. And then I decided to add in some garlic powder even though the recipe didn't call for it. So now on to the egg mixture. I'm just gonna be cracking in three eggs to my mixing bowl, and then I'm gonna add in a third cup of water and then some hot sauce. The recipe said to use a whole cup, but I definitely didn't use that much. And then I'm just going to take out my whisk and I am going to mix that all together. 
Now I'm going to take that chicken out of the buttermilk, trying to shake off the excess, and I'm just going to remove that to a separate plate. And then it is time to season this chicken up. So I'm just gonna be using some salt, black pepper, and some garlic powder. And even though I didn't show it, I did flip these over and season the other side the exact same way. At this time, I started to heat up my vegetable oil. So to my Copper Chef pan, I'm adding it in until it's about an inch high up the sides. Health police, don't come for me. It's rare that I deep fry anything. And if you want a really good fried chicken, you're gonna have to deep fry it. It's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to take my chicken and dunk it into that flour mixture, give it a good shake. And then one by one, I'm going to place it into the egg bowl. Once again, taking my hands and just making sure that it all gets coated really well. And then it's going to get placed back into the flour mixture for a final time so you are getting a double coating of that deliciousness I'm going to give it a final shake and then I'm just going to place it onto a separate plate yes this meal created a whole lot of dishes but it was so worth it now it is finally time to fry these babies up. So it is key to make sure that your oil is hot enough before adding in your chicken. If you don't do this, your breading is going to fall off and you are going to have a soggy mess. And also if your heat is set too high, it will burn obviously. So what you could do is check the temperature with a thermometer. I don't have one, but you could also do the flour test where you just sprinkle in a little bit of flour. And if it starts to bubble and sizzle, you know it's ready. So I did have to cook this in three batches. I did six tenders per batch. You don't want to over crowd the pan and I cooked each side for three minutes so a total of six minutes I just kept setting my timer and I'm using a fork because I've noticed that anytime I use tongs it tends to tear the breading I definitely didn't want that and don't worry I was very careful not to scratch my non-stick surface with that fork and y'all, just look at this golden brown deliciousness. It's been a long time since I have fried chicken, but every time that I have tried in the past, it never turned out this perfect. So this is an awesome recipe, and I just want you guys to try it. Here is a closer look. I'm just going to drain those on a paper towel lined plate. And I also wanted to note that if you wanted to use bone-in chicken pieces, you would just follow the same recipe. We just prefer boneless, but you would obviously fry it for a longer cooking time. Now, here is everything tied together. Ironically, I found a packet of pop Popeye's honey in my kitchen so I just drizzled that all over my biscuit which by the way I did warm up as well as the red beans and rice since I made those first and then I'm not going to say the chicken tasted just like Popeye's but I will say it was just as good if not better and then we had those crispy Cajun fries and the best ranch that you will ever taste this meal was just awesome so if any of you guys try to recreate this definitely let me know down in the comments what you thought about it or take a picture and tag me on Instagram I would love to see that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome weekend and I'll see you in my next video.